Welcome to this QuickBooks 2019 tutorial for beginners on how to enter a sales tax refund. Okay, so this can happen occasionally where you go in, you pay your sales taxes in QuickBooks, you file your forms, and you get a refund check in the mail. And you got to know what to do with it. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do, okay, is you want to make sure that your sales tax items are set up correctly. All right, because if we go to, so if we go to vendors, we go to sales tax and you say pay sales tax, all right, QuickBooks is just calculating based on the invoices and based on what's sold, et cetera. So it's just keeping track of this and it's all based on your item list and your item list is where you're gonna have your sales tax items. So we'll get to that in just a second. So, you know, generally, you know, you've been collecting the sales tax, you're gonna check these off and you're going to, you know, let's say print the check or pay online and file and you're done. And if you get a refund, you know, you say to yourself, okay, I paid what it said was due and we collected what we thought. Uh, so why am I getting a refund? All right, so the first thing that you wanna do, you wanna go up to your list and you're gonna to go to your item list and you're gonna go, you're gonna see these, uh, the type. All right, so we've got in this item list, we got service, inventory, non-inventory, other charges, group, okay? And then you'll see down here, we've got our sales tax items, all right? So you wanna make sure that these rates are correct because sales tax rates can change every six months. Uh, it depends on where you're at, but you know, they can go up, go down. Uh, there can be new ones, all right? They change pretty frequently. All right, so let's say that uh, we realized that San Tomas County was now 7.8% instead of, or 7.7% instead of 7.75, and that's why we got the refund. All right, so the first thing that you wanna do, you wanna go in, you can right click this, you can just click edit, and you're just gonna change your rate. All right, so that's the first thing. All right, so we wanna make sure that we get the correct rate in there, and we're gonna click okay. All right, so now it's changed to 7.7%. All right, so first things first, change the rate. Now, the second thing is you gotta know what to do with this uh, refund check. Now, what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna put it towards sales tax liability or anything like that, all right? Because when you overcharge for sales tax and you get that money, okay, that is income to you. All right, so if you only needed to charge $10 in sales tax and you charged 15, well, you collect 15 from your customer and you pay 10 to the Department of Revenue, whoever it is, and that extra $5 is gonna be income to you because you collected extra money from the customer. All right, so it's the same thing with the uh, sales tax refund. If you overpay your sales tax, it generally is gonna mean that you collected too much sales tax. And because of that, that is considered additional income to you. So what you wanna do is you want to just simply go to banking and make deposits. You can go directly to your check register. Let me cancel this here. You know, you can do it directly in your check register if you want to, but we're gonna say, let's look up California. Uh, board of Equalization, I think they're in here. Uh, they may not be in here as a vendor. So we'll say that this was a sales tax that was due to City of Bayshore, let's say. All right, so you're from account. Generally where I'm gonna put this is other income, all right, which is all the way at the bottom. We'll just say other income because it's not sales, it's not anything like that. And we're just gonna say sales tax refund. All right, you can put in a check number, All right, payment method check. And if you have a class, okay, and let's say it's two, $20 and 36 cents, okay? All right, so here's what we're doing. We're saying it's from City of Bayshore, which is who we overpaid the sales tax to. It's other income. We've got all our information here and we just hit save and close, okay? So that's it. So that money goes into the checking account. We record that as other income. And again, the, one of the most important things you wanna do is make sure that you change the rate to the correct rate. Uh, and a lot of times what I do is, you know, for different sales tax is 
you can, when you go to uh, register, let's say it's California or Missouri, it doesn't matter where it is, uh, a lot of times you can sign up for um, a list on their website, which will alert you to sales tax changes. Okay, so look in your state, look in your locality. You may be able to uh, sign up for an email list, which gives you, uh, will send you an email every time there is a sales tax change. That way you can stay on top of it. All right, any questions whatsoever, please feel free to leave a comment or question below. Head over to the QuickBooks University. Love to have you as a member over there. Uh, head over there. You can get a couple of free videos on the most common mistakes people make in QuickBooks and how to avoid them. The website is qbuniversity.org.